32 seconds into the flight. The three liquid fuel main engines soon will throttle back to 72% of rated performance down in the bucket, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it goes transonic. Hi, my name is Miles Coney, AKA Instant Human Entertainment, and welcome to my film series, Quarantine Chronicles. And we got our guest speaker, Chris Bean. Hey guys, how you doing? So I'm gonna be asking Chris Bean a lot of questions about quarantine and what he's been doing during the quarantine experience of the pandemic. What do you do for a living and talk about your background? Well, I currently work at Kirkland's in Bethlehem, Georgia. And while doing so, going to Gwinnett Technical College to become an EMT, then join Gwinnett County Fire Department. And that's something I've always wanted to do. But currently, with all the pandemic going on, that's it's a bit difficult to do at the moment, but managing. Right, as I forgot to mention, I'm a huge NASA fan, and part of which I have a Lego replica of the Apollo 11 lunar lander. And my Saturn V replica, but sadly it fell over and is in pieces. But I have been to Kennedy Space Center, seen the Rocket Garden, all of the old intercontinental ballistic missiles turned into something useful, seen the Saturn V that they have on display, which is huge for 363 feet tall. built by multiple companies out of mostly American and German engineering. Let's see. The night before we were in Florida seeing a SpaceX launch while sitting on the beach and that's something I won't forget because you know first ever rocket launch that's something spectacular. Mm. We didn't get to see it land because it's like several hundred nautical miles out. Oh, wow. Plus wood burning of the Apollo 11 insignia. Oh, mission. wow. Okay. All right. I got these while down in Florida. This is John Glenn's mission patch of the Mercury program. He wow. was also the first American to orbit. Though the first few were suborbit flights which lasted about 15 minutes then you got Apollo 11 which is the first human landing of the Apollo program back in July of 1969 and then you got a shuttle mission patch of Space Shuttle Discovery and guess whose name is on it Wow. He was, Don Glenn was retired after that, but he went back into space on the, in the shuttle program while as a senator. There we are. Shows the Falcon 9 with Dragon lifting off the launch pad. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. We've got a Falcon Heavy one to which the Falcon Heavy is pretty much this with two of the first stage boosters straps. Making it a super heavy launch vehicle. And it beats the Saturn V by a factor of two. It's the world's most powerful rocket. Wow. That's amazing, and, everybody. But when the world's the, most powerful rocket. By a factor of two. The fact that the Falcon Heavy is the world's most powerful rocket because it's got 27 engines. Wow. The Falcon 9 has nine engines on each first stage. Okay. How has the COVID pandemic affected you in your day-to-day -day life? It's affected a lot of it. The fact that some of the stuff that we usually do, 
you can't do because of all the restrictions, the mask wearing. Um, I mean, I can still travel around, visit family, but I'm trying to kind of limit that because my great grandparents and my grandmother are both like high risk because my great grandparents are in their 80s and my grandmother, she's 60 something. So we try to like limit visiting them and go into all these other places because we try to go to the beach, but due to the fact that COVID, it's a high risk spot. So we're trying to wait it out. But we'll get to it eventually. What is something good that has come out of this situation? Hmm. Well, the fact that everybody's trying to come together again as a community, as a whole, that's always good to see. But still the fact that you can go to some places and some are still trying to ease up on what we can do. But... <laughs> I would say the good thing is we've got to go up to Delonica and have some family time and just enjoy it. What is something bad or something you don't like about this situation? <sighs> the fact that everywhere you go, people will complain about what's going on because some people believe that you shouldn't wear the mask even though you're healthy, this, that, and the other. I mean, I personally don't feel the need to wear one, but I'll wear it if absolutely need be. But half the stuff that they're telling us, like even if people are healthy, they've somehow gotten the Rona when they absolutely don't. They're trying to me, I believe it's just, they're just trying to use scare tactics just to keep us at bay for whatever reason. What is the first thing you want to do when this is over? Either invite some friends to have a drink or go out to have friends and go out to Six Flags for at least a day or two. Do something fun for once instead of being stuck inside the house for most of the summer. Do you have any last words for the audience? Just stay safe. Do what they're trying to tell you. And just live your life the best you can at the moment. It's the only thing we can do. He's definitely got a point on that, guys. Um, just wait till this stuff is over. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Don't go right. crazy. And that's basically all you guys have to do is just stay home. Um, every time you go out, make sure you put on a mask and make sure you're protected. And even if you have to wear gloves, you'll be fine. Wear gloves and put on a mask. But I understand some people say, okay, I wear glasses, I put on a mask. So every time somebody's talking to me- It'll fog them. It'll fog my glasses, so. Trust me, girl, my girlfriend has the same issue. Usually when we like go to Target or whatever, she wears glasses and as soon as she puts that thing on, fog all over the lens and it's like. Yeah. Um. Thank you guys for watching Quarantine Chronicles. And I just interviewed Chris Bean. And uh, thank you guys for everything. Stay safe and keep watching Quarantine Chronicles. And thank you guys for watching Instant Human Entertainment. And have a good day. See you guys later.